back in Zerovac doing another tutorial and today I'm going to show you how to enable execute permissions on a NAS storage drive. The uh, NAS we're using today is a WD MyCloud EX2 uh, so it should apply across the whole WD series and most NAS will be the same structure inside the more than likely Linux use a Samba share and have a folder called shares. So for this one there's already a few files in mine uh, so I'm just going to first m mount my folder, so I'm going to right click here, map network drive, I'm going to call it T for tutorial, and I'm going to type in the network address of my NAS, I already have a folder prepared for this. So in here, there's not much, I can open the folder, that's fine, there's no problem with that, it's just like anything unusual. If I put a text document in here, let's call it that in hello. World. Save that. I can open this, I can edit it, save it, close it, and open it. Like you can do it with any NAS. Now, the problem comes into when you want to actually run the program. So, I have just a media serial thing here for a keyboard project. It's, the only reason I picked it is because it's a standalone executable, there's no DLLs or anything like that. So, if I try and run that, you see, uh, click run, yeah, and then Windows cannot access the specified device path or file. So basically what this means is the share on Linux has allowed the folder to be um, read to and written to, but you can't actually run programs off it. Now most NAS do this because NASs are storage drives. You shouldn't be running programs off them. You use them to save files and photos and music and movies and whatever you get up to in your spare time. But this can also be a bit inconvenient. You're in an office and you might have a program that has a database tied to it. So, yes, it's not the quickest method, but it's better having something than nothing. So, I have the folder here. I set up my hard, I set up the uh, network storage and you know created my own folder and all that jazz. So, what you're going to need to do for this is you're going to need uh, a program that can use SSH. So, I use one called Putty. Uh, you can just see the budget configuration. You can just Google it, and it's one of the first few results. And you're also going to want to enable SSH on your NAS. So here you just type in the IP. It asks you for a login when you set up your device. Uh, now, mine static IP. If you don't know your IP, you can just go in here to devices and printers, I believe. Oh, no, it's, sorry. It's um, networks. So you go here to network. And this just comes up as a storage thing when you install other drivers. You just go properties, and you'll see there's an IP address there. So that's the IP address you type into your uh, web browser, and it gives you this login command. And my one, most of the ones will be the same. So I'm just going to log in here. And don't, don't want to send me password. Now, this is a 4 terabyte drive rated at 1, so I effectively get 2 terabytes protect, you know, double backed up. So in here, then, I have shares. And there's already a few folders here, nothing too major. The thing comes with a few, and I have my tutorial one. And that's fine. So I create my own one there, it's public and whatever, the jazz. So what I really want to do is go into my settings, uh, network. And I already have the setup static. If you have DHCP, your IP address will change. I would suggest setting as static. And if you're doing that, make sure it falls out of the DHCP range of your router because that can cause problems if you're in an office and stuff. Usually in home networks, fairly high, set it up to, I don't know, like 220 and stuff, and you'll be fine. You, you'll never have like 200 devices on your thing. But on my one, I have it set up so that it has a static address, it'll never be overwritten. I don't have IPv6, my router doesn't support it. But uh, SSH is here, you just want to enable that, and that's fine. And just an SSH, like, Basically, just click SSH, and there's nothing you need to configure, really. So once you've done that, uh, you just save it, and your best restart the drive. Uh, this doesn't need it because it's already enabled. So, yeah. So we'll just show again that that does not run. But I can open text document and change it. So when you install your putty, again, just Google putty or SSH terminal. Anthem similar to that. Basically, Anthem I can use you can use it as an SSH. If you have Linux and a laptop, and so if you literally just type in SSH and the IP, and it works. But for Windows, you have to get a program to do it. So here, uh, port 22 and all these to go to default settings. So I'm just going to type in my IP address for my NAS. 
and then click open and it's going to change the font size here a bit so it should be easier to read uh, if I can find it it was easier to find it last time there we go uh, so it's going to go with size 20 font so log in as and the username for WD's uh, my clouds are S, uh, SSHD, that's the username. Different drives might be different, just Google it, you'll find it. Uh, the password is be by the password you set, which you can set there, which is the same password as my I use for my admin one. So that's fine, log in, and it drops you into this shell. Now, this is Busybox, this is fine, there's Bash and everything installed, but Busybox is grand for all we need to do. So if I list the uh, current directory, you can see there's a folder there called shares. Now, and the WD, this is where Samba mounts all the folders to. Uh, and if we actually change into shares, you can see there are actually, sorry, I'll do a full list. There are actually symbolic links to other folders. And all these links here have read, write, and executable efficiency. So you might be like, wait, hold on. I can, there's executable here, but I can't execute things. What's actually happening? What's happening is, even though the symbolic link has full permissions, if we actually do a list of the folder that contains all those shares, so it should just be, let's go A2. You can see there, um, there's quite a few. Now, again, I've already ran like a command just to do it across the board to execute but my tutorial one right okay my tutorial one shouldn't have it so Jonathan there actually doesn't so I'm actually going to just change the tutorial one back to what it should be just so you can see what it's actually doing uh, hd slash hd underscore a2 slash tutorial And if I do that other command again, you should see that now. Story is read and writes only. And that's what it will uh, configure it up to by default. So, what we're going to want to do is we're going to want to change the permissions of that folder. Not these ones, because these ones are fine. They're all, you can see they're all read, write, and executables. But the actual folder is the pointer. So in this tutorial, my folder name is tutorial. So this is actually the directory of the folder I want to change the permissions of. You can do it across the board I have in this machine. It's not that important. Um, if you're backing up, you know, it might be safer just to have, you know, you know, uh, storage that can't execute things. But again, that's up to yourself now. You want to do it. Again, this is only in the home, so it's not that important. So I just said, yeah, go on, whatever. So we're going to want to use the change mod. So it's CHMOD. And we're going to want to tell it to do it recursively. And what recursively means is it goes to the folder, but it also goes to every folder within that folder. And it changes everything. And also it means that any folder that, or any file that is placed in that folder afterwards is also executable because you're doing it to the folder and all its contents and that's added to it get automatically from Windows get those contents as well so the change mod command here is uh, 777 777 is the command for read write and execute for all users 666 is uh, just read and write but we want to execute so 777 uh, you can also I, I think it's 222 for just executes if you want to do it that way too, which can be very handy for setting up programs that uh, a company might need but shouldn't actually be doing anything with. So here we go, change mod 777. Uh, what am I doing? Slash capital R for the recursive. And you're going to want to type in your folder uh, that we actually want to do. So I want to do hd slash hd underscore a2 slash tutorial. And Again, we're in root, so we don't have to tell the sudo or anything like that. The router doesn't actually have it, or the NAS doesn't actually have it. And if I do another list all of the mount folder, 
you shall see now that tutorial now has a read write and executable permission. So if I try and run this, it hopefully should work. And yeah, there we go. And again, we can still uh, yeah, save that, close it, open it. You still have all your normal permissions, but now you can actually execute programs off it. So it's a nice little, uh, very handy thing. Makes the NAS storage is even handier now. Again, it's not the quickest thing I've real I've noticed running programs off it. It's not very fast, but it's better than nothing. Very handy for sharing programs across systems too. So that's all, guys. There's not really a lot else. Uh, let's clear that and exit. Yeah. So uh, if you, this tutorial helped you or anything, uh, please leave a like or a comment. If you didn't, again, comment, let me know. I'll see if I can get back to you, maybe give you pointers and whatever. But yeah, so that's this tutorial, guys. Uh, thank you for watching, and goodbye.